Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome. On behalf of National Coalition 100 Black Women, Dallas Metropolitan Chapter, we proudly present Strive for Life and Obesity Awareness and Nutrition Program. Our program today's purpose are causes of obesity, lack of proper nutrition, lack of physical activities, genetics, psychosocial factors, and obesity prevention. We are so excited to bring you our obesity program, especially during National Healthy Weight Week. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the, our presentation, please type them in it to our chat box. Our chat moderator, Madam Sarah Jones, will be bringing them up during the presentation. And we will also have time for questions at the end. Now, without further ado, I will turn the time over to our presenter, Madam Shalanda Peters. Thank you so much. I'm so excited today to um, introduce everyone to our guests that will be joining us tonight. Um, we are joined today by Chef Nay Cox, Crystal Garrett, and Mike Garrett, and together they um, have formed Choose Life. So before we go into their bios, if anyone is participating tonight and making their cook and uh, doing the cooking demonstration, now is the perfect time for you to go ahead and get your items and be prepared because once I finish um, introducing our guests, they're going to go ahead and launch into their presentation. So Chef Nay Cox, who's with us tonight, enjoys feeding people. That is her passion. Um, she has come to see food in a new light and basically has seen food as more than just fuel, but as medicine, as a way to... Um, eat healthy and to bring healthy changes uh, in her own life as well as in the life of others. And it is her mission in life to use the skills that she has developed over time to, um, to make change and to enrich her life and others as well. We're also joined today by Crystal Garrett. And Crystal has a unique story. Um, she's living with congenital heart disease. And because of that, she has experienced a lot of different emotions, uh, fear, anger, depression, and anxiety that can come with living with a chronic illness. Um, but in order for her to make changes that she needed for her own life, she had to take a stand and develop some healthy lifestyle changes. And those changes have benefited her for the better. And she is here today to talk about that experience and um, how you can incorporate a lot of these changes in your life as well. Basically, um, she decided that just because she had this diagnosis, that does not define her. She can make changes in her own life that can be beneficial. And we're also joined by Mike Garrett. Mike has a, a family history of diabetes and hypertension and saw himself kind of slipping into a lot of those same habits that we all find ourselves slipping into, not taking care of ourselves, not eating properly, that kind of thing. And when he just basically one day decided to take charge and to take a stand and to incorporate um, living his best life and in, in basically trying to come up with some healthy changes that would um, you know, help him to live much longer. And those changes started with his diet. So he's going to be talking with us about a lot of those changes today. And he has been on that journey for the last five or six years. And in his words, he has experienced the best health of his life. So we look forward to them sharing their story and helping us in our fight to end obesity and share with our listeners. Take it away, Choose Life. All right, so let's go ahead and share our screen. If you just bear with me just for a second. And how are you guys doing? Thank you guys for having us. Um, it, it just feels kind of surreal hearing our bios and just you know looking at it from a different point of view. But we thank you guys for having us. Uh, we want to share some things with you guys that could possibly help you uh, to find your why 
and to live a healthier life. So we're going to go into our presentation. Um, let's give us one and second we're about here. To eat. Yes. That's the most important part. <laughs> yes. yes. So, and all you guys should have uh, the presentation. There are some changes, nothing big that you wouldn't be able to follow through with. So, as you can see, you know, this Crystal, she's also a yoga teacher. I'm a certified personal trainer. And Chef Nay is certified in nutrition and just cooking good food. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to share a little something about myself. This is my before and after. You know, I had got up to 179 plus pounds, maybe. I think I tilted over 180. Um, my family, like my bio said, has diabetes and, and hypertension and, and a lot of other things. But one of the things that I realized that was the common thread was not so much of the genetics, but it was the behavior. So over six years ago, I changed, I uh, started eating better, and I started working out uh, five to six to seven days a week. And these are the results that I've maintained by living that healthy life. Well, let's get into it. We're gonna give you everything you need. Yeah, so here's some fun facts. 3.4 million people die each year due to obesity. Obesity is a condition that is characterized by excessive body fat that increases the risk of many health problems, such as, like Mike mentioned, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. And today we are going to discuss a few tips and tricks to manage obesity or to avoid it altogether. Okay, so... Making a healthy priority, making health a priority. There are so many advantages of living in the modern world. Better technology, advanced networking, uh, community infrastructure, everything seems to be taking a step ahead, except our health. Everybody has, for the most part, kind of put the health, you know, on the side burn, you know, on the sidelines. And so with that, we have, you know, we've become a species that become more prone to host of diseases, medical conditions, and some which were, were not even heard of over 30 years ago. Now, as you know, obesity is a condition that is fast becoming the most rampant, one of the rampant medical concerns across the globe. In 2014, more than 1.9 billion adults were overweight, and of these, over 600 million or 13% of the global population were obese, and the numbers are only worsening with each passing year. So the problem is not necessarily, can you all hear us? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. The problem is not necessarily the body weight alone, Obese people are 60% more likely to develop diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, stroke, dementia, as compared to their fit and healthy counterparts. Like Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes two or more prevailing disorders in the body can result in excessive accumulation of weight. Uh, while sometimes it only, it's only because of a poor dietary choice or sedentary lifestyle. You know, and with, with us dealing with the pandemic, a lot of us have developed more of a sedentary lifestyle. Now, it's not your fault. According to experts, these are a few of the common causes of obesity. First, genetics. Did you know that your OB, any obese parent is more likely to have obese offspring than lean parents? Several studies in the past have proven that obese genes express themselves dominantly onto the genes of their children. Okay, so junk food. Junk food is tried to be one of the prime causes of obesity. Consumptions of large, greasy burgers, crispy fries, pasta, noodles, carbonated sodas, all of that can take a toll on just, just you know, just on your weight. 
but not, but also in your heart, it can cause sugar and glucose levels to rise. Uh, the junk food, which is highly processed, made with second grade and refined ingredients, are the ones to watch out for the most. Now, indulging in junk food every once in a while is okay, but the constant cravings and the need to appease the temptations is a risky zone. Food addiction is characterized by people having no control over their eating behaviors or only feeling happy when they have consumed something greasy or sugary. More simply put, cravings gone wild. So now we, we posted McDonald's food here because McDonald's has, has it down to a science. There are chemicals that are scientifically proven to get you addicted to these foods, mm -hmm. which is why you find every time you pass by a golden arch, your mouth starts to water. It's a chemical response. Mm, that's a bad response. So side effects. Obesity could be a a side effect of certain, it can cause a side effect of certain medications that you may be on, certain diabetes medications, antidepressants, antipsychotics, all have been notoriously linked to the weight gain or the weight that you can gain. And also insulin. Insulin is crucial to the smooth body functions of all these systems. They all work together and they need insulin. Um, because it uses sugar or glucose from the carbohydrates in the food we eat for energy. Now, it stores that glucose for future use. And that insulin, uh, that insulin helps regulate the energy storage. It also makes sure the levels of sugar in the blood is never too high or too low. Insulin it has a very important engagement with fat cells as well. And fat, if you didn't know it, is also a preferred energy source from our body. The impaired insulin can result, result in elevated insulin levels and the energy getting stored in the fat cells instead of being used for other functions or even used immediately. So that energy gets stored and then you just have it on you chilling. Uh, it can cause high blood, blood sugar too, which can also trigger diabetes. And that's why diabetes and obesity are so closely intertwined. So more reasons like um, hormonal issues. Leptin is a hormone produced by fat cells. This hormone sends signals to the part of our brain that controls food intake, that we are full and we need to stop eating. But when the leptin isn't working as it should, the brain becomes resistant to the signals and the body doesn't understand when to stop. Food availability. Now, according to the latest studies, Children who live close to cafes and food outlets are more likely to be at risk of obesity. Nowadays, access to junk food is getting easily day by day. DoorDash and Uber <laughs> Eats and so many other things. Your favorite burgers or pizza is just a call away. In this scenario, it becomes increasingly difficult to keep obesity at bay simply because of them. Yes. Um, and I know you see this hot, yeah, hot sauce in his bag. That's yeah. how it's on that part. <laughs> um, sugary foods also uh, have been uh, praised by experts to say time and time again um, that it, it's no good for the body. Um, sugar is kind of like gasoline on a fire. Your body's automatically going to use it first if it has it. And your body wants to use carbohydrates first naturally and then fat secondarily. But if you put sugar, your body's like, mm, block the carbohydrates, give me the sugar. <laughs> and so those sugar, when you eat too much of it, it starts getting stored as fat. Again, just chilling there. Uh, and it increases your body mass. Excess fructose consumption as well, like high fructose corn syrup, which is 70% of the foods that we eat that are refined, um, can cause elevated insulin levels too. All of these factors combined ultimately result in obesity. So it's not your fault. All the time, it's not your fault. So the effect of obesity is more than just fat. A person is identified obese when the BMI is 25 or greater. BMI is body mass index or a person's height divided by their weight. The, ex uh, the excessive body fat increases the risk of serious health problems. Some of the problems that obesity is often linked to 
are cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, chronic back pain, osteoarthritis, and depression, mostly due to ridicule, ridicule, social bias, rejection, and humiliation. Wow. So let's look at some of the things that we can do. Uh, from children to adults, obesity sees no age and can affect anybody. Reorganizing your kitchen, swapping out the unhealthy junk with nutrient-dense food is the best gift you can give to yourself. Um, you can start by swapping the refined carb sources for whole grains. And as you know, a whole grain is uh, the endosperm attached to it as well. It's the endosperm germ and bran. Normally, when you have refined uh, grains, they only retain the endosperm. And the whole grain managed to retain all the nutrients that are processed. And those nutrients are normally for the seed itself. So it's kind of like you, you're dipping that seed of those nutrients in, and putting it back to your body. So you need to stock up on whole grains like quinoa, brown rice, or steel cut oats and use them very often. Yeah. Avoid red meat and opt for lean meat like chicken and salmon. Adding protein with every meal could prove to be a game changer for anyone trying to lose weight. So if you're cutting out meat altogether, try beans and the goons like garbanzo beans, lentils, and kidney beans. They're all packed full of protein. And you also want to, I mean, just to piggyback off what you said, you know, protein is so important because your muscles, they use 80% of the protein that you put in, in your body. They also exactly. burn the most calories just by doing simple tasks like walking or picking up a book or mm -hmm. bending over. You use so many calories that way, mm -hmm. um, which is part of that basal metabolic rate that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. right. But you definitely want to load up on seasonal vegetables. They provide both soluble and insoluble fibers in addition to vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants to keep you young. <laughs> oh, yeah. So... Stay away from trans fat as they are one of the biggest corporates of growing estimates of obesity globally. Fast food, instant food, fried junk, cookies, pasta, burgers, and noodles, and all of the above. <laughs> Please stay away from it. And here's the kicker. Our biggest obstacle is sugar. Because it's in most every everything that's ready to eat now. And like I said, you know, your body wants to burn it fast. So you end up burning sugar instead of calories. So the fact that you have, we'll say where it's at instead of being used for energy. Your sugar intake should be less than 10% of your total calories consumed in the entire day. So if a normal weight woman needs 1,900 calories a day, therefore no more than 10 to 11 teaspoons of sugar should be consumed daily. And if you have the measuring spoons, if you take 10 teaspoons and measure it out, you'll see how much sugar that actually is, and it's not a lot at all. Um, a lot of foods have natural sugars in, hidden in them too, like bananas and apples, so you have to watch out for that too. Yeah. So we really want to feed our body. Skipping meals is never, ever a sustainable way to go about obesity management. Three balanced meals a day are a must for everyone. Say it again for the people in the back. Three balanced meals a day for everyone. It's essential. Don't <laughs> skip. Don't skip. Your body needs fuel. Okay, avoid self-judgment in conclusion. A healthy and balanced diet is the key to optimum weight and for a healthy lifestyle in general. While in transition, it is very important to be kind to yourself. Get active. A good diet must be complemented with a good fitness regimen. Exercise is a critical component to fighting the negative health effects of obesity and increasing the body's overall resistance, real, res, resiliency. resiliency, stamina, and strength. Get help. Obesity management is not a cakewalk. There are many physical and psychological changes that need to be addressed. Seek support if and when things get too hard and make a plan. Make yourself a diet and resolve to stick to it. Look online for the most recent dietary guidelines and structure your diet around fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. One should definitely steer clear of all sources of trans fat. It is not good.
Today's ingredients are very, very helpful. Zucchini is the first one we have. It's one of the healthiest vegetables packed with nutrition and many other health benefits, which we'll go into the next slide. Zucchini is also called summer squash, even though due to our agriculture worldwide, we can pretty much get it all year. It's a member of the gourd family. It's the same as like uh, pumpkins. And it originated originally from uh, Central America, from where it spread to the rest of the world. Um, bell peppers are also very, very popular and can be bought year round. And most of these items can be as well. Um, all the peppers start green, so here, that's a fun fact. And as they ripen, they begin to change color into yellow, orange, and finally into red, depending on how long they stay on the vine. The color determines its ripeness and dark. The darker the color, the more nutrients it has that it gets from the actual plant, which is why you can taste the difference between the colors, uh, and the red ones tend to be more sweet. Mm -hmm. um, they're part of the nightshade family of vegetables, so if you do have a thyroid problem, please stay away because it will interfere with your iodine uh, absorption. Uh, quinoa, uh, a lot of people are like, quinoa, quinoa, <laughs> quinoa. <laughs> it is a whole grain. It is also a uh, complete protein as well. And a lot of people don't know that. It's great for brain health, heart health, and digestive health. So it is a superfood. It dates back to 3,000 or 4,000 uh, years ago. And the Incans in South America first realized that the seed was fit to eat because they were first just feeding it to their animals. Um, it was believed to increase the stamina of the warriors because it, you know, it's, it gives you energy. It's full of protein. And uh, it was referred to as Chiso Saya Mama, or the mother of all grains. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, it was very cheap, too, until the health benefits yeah. around 2014 mm -hmm. came out. And then now it's expensive. So uh, red onions are also very popular. Um, a lot of people keep just big bags of these at their house because of their longevity. Uh, they're the one of, uh, while most children dislike their pungent and bitter flavor, most adults embrace and use them regularly. Red onions contain twice as many antioxidants as any other form of onion, making them a powerful part of any anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle. And they also taste a little bit milder. Cool. So now we're going to transition because we're about to get ready to cook. So do we have any questions? We got some health benefits. All right, let's see. I, I don't have any questions, but I'll share with the group. Um, I used to, I am a labels. I used to be a vegan. I used to be a vegetarian. I dibble dabbled. Then um, I find myself probably going back to the lifestyle. I'm currently on a green smoothie kick right now. I haven't had any meat in a week. That's good. That, yeah, that's um, awesome. So, I, I mean, I don't, I was never really a meat person anyway. I could you know, care less about it. Uh, okay. Some people are fanatics. I really, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I think because the reason why it doesn't matter to me is because when I was a ve vegetarian or vegan, I got hit to so many different types of food that I just, what do you call it? Expand your palate, if you will. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that process. I got really heavy into Mediterranean food and just into, you know, like Greek food and um, Ethiopian food and it was just like really eye-opening so I just wanted to share with my you know my sister is like if you're on a journey if you're you're trying to lose weight if you're you know trying to get more healthy it is a very long process but you always have to educate yourself like this wonderful presentation that was before us because um, every billboard every book they're just trying to sell to you the unhealthy lifestyle so you have to do your own research and really get back to your roots on what is healthy for your body, not what just what people are selling to you. Yeah. And thank you. And that's that's really uh, well said. And I think one of the traps that people fall into is the whole idea of a diet. 
uh, we have to wash that away because a diet is something that you'll pick up and put back down. But a lifestyle is something that you grab a hold, grab a hold of and run with. And this has to be a lifestyle because if it's anything else, then you know you you won't follow through. So if we don't have any other question, uh, maybe... I have a question. Okay, go ahead. And I'm sorry, I was late. I, I completely forgot. Um, so in terms, and so you may have covered this already, um, but in terms of the difference between the red onion and a yellow onion, nutrition wise, what's the difference? Because taste bud wise, I prefer the yellow onion or the white onion. <laughs> yeah, it's a milder, but the color comes from the antioxidants in the soil that it grows in. And um, so those antioxidants slow down the aging of your internal organs as well as your external organs like your skin. Um, also, they're great for anti-inflammatory diets. If you have arthritis, they can definitely eat raw in salads or cooked. They can definitely ease some of that uh, inflammation within your body. Better than the yellow. Yes. That's they good to know. I might have to alter my taste buds. They, they are sweeter, but as you cook them, those natural sugars will be released because they're, they're locked in with that, that sulfur, which is that, that smell that you, you have. And once it starts to cook, the sulfur dissipates and the sweetness is unlocked from this, making the red onion sweeter uh, and more palatable once it's cooked than any other onion. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to start off with our ingredients you see here. We're going to start doing our stuffed zucchini first. Then we'll go into our stuffed bell pepper. We'll be kind of doing it simultaneously to save time here. It's cooked quinoa. Um, this, I used a rice cooker to cook it. It's one part to one part, either water if if you don't need anything extra. Or I always use vegetable stock because it just enriches the flavor. And then you can just mildly season it and it'll taste great versus uh, just bland. So for today, we have the zucchini itself. We're going to be using all of the ingredients, the bell peppers and the onions as well. And I have them already. Right okay, we have we have two questions. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Uh, we know that many of our communities are plagued with food deserts. What can we as individuals and organizations do to assist these communities in getting the nutritious nutritious options that are needed? That's why I specifically chose these ingredients. These ingredients can be found in all in ninety five percent of grocery stores because they're the most popular vegetables worldwide, they can be found almost anywhere. So whether you're at Kroger or Walmart or some corner stores I've seen have certain, if they have like a little produce section, I know Target has mm -hmm. this stuff as well. Um, you can find these ingredients pretty much on the side of the road. You know, a lot of farmers sell. They're, they're widely uh, available to find. And the next question is hypo, hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. um, did you say that green peppers were not good if you have a thyroid issue? Uh, no, they are part of the nightshade family, which um, they do have a poisonous compound. Um, and specifically the nightshade family, well, potatoes uh, and bell peppers especially, uh, they block your body's ability to absorb iodine especially if you have uh, hypothyroidism. Your, your thyroid con controls how much iodine is absorbed. And see, we're not using, we use a pink Himalayan salt, which is iodine free. But if you're using the, the fine table salt, that would be your source of iodine. But your, your, if your thyroid is malfunctioning, it's just gonna push the iodine out, you know, through your kidneys and, you know, to the toilet instead of absorbing it, which, because it's an essential right. nutrient. Mm -hmm. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're using all four of these ingredients in all of our, in our 
uh, recipe today. So we're gonna start. We have salt, one, uh, one half tablespoon, and one half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I have just one ounce of avocado oil. This is what I use. It's a lighter tasting oil and avocados are full of healthy fats and they, they tend to um, slow your digestion and, and help with uh, nutrient absorption and also kind of keep everything clean and then you're invigorated by the, um, by the avocado oil itself, the nutrients from the avocado. So I have a, we just switch this. Okay, let's switch cameras. So we are going to start with a, a pan that's kind of warm here, a medium to high heat. We're going to, would you switch back to this one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a half a bell pepper each here to make one full bell pepper, one half of an onion, and they're, they're cut, you know, fairly big because we're going to uh, put them inside this. And then um, about a fourth of a cup of quinoa. And we'll be putting all that together. So if you have your zucchini, go ahead and preheat your oven to about 350. We're going to cut off the ends here and slice it lengthwise. I hold my knife like this for full control and plus it's an extension of my hand so I don't have to worry about the blade slipping if you want it. Now I'll open it up. These are the seeds that are full of water and nutrients, so we're going to save them. And I have just a little spoon here, to make an indention, and then I'll just slowly carve circles out to make this up into a little boat, like that. Now save your internal pieces because we'll be using those as well. And then I just use this to kind of straight to scoop it out. Yep, just like that. Yeah, I can't wait to taste it. Same thing on this <laughs> other side. How do you feel about um, grapes, the different types of oils? You're using avocado oil. I see a lot of grapeseed oil now, um, saffron oil, like. There seems like to be an obsession with different types of oils. Uh, different types of oil hold different types of nutritional value. And the, the, the first thing you need to do is figure out what your body needs specifically. I can't tell you that avocado oil is for you if I don't know you particularly. We use avocado oil because it's the best oil for all three of us. And um, it's, it doesn't have a taste to it. Uh, it's, it's very mild. We only eat vegetables, so we, we want to taste those vegetables. Uh, Grapeseed oil uh, is, is good as well, um, but like I said, not too great for us because we're, we're on our journey focused on uh, digestive health and we've already went through the detoxification process. Uh, so I would just find out what oil you like and then you know try to figure out how that oil makes you feel. Um, and the nutritional yeah. value of yes. each one. Yeah. Yes. And also one for the heat for you. Yeah. Yes. And another, all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. another reason we like avocado oil is because it has a high smoke point. So it doesn't burn as easily. And personally, I use a lot of garlic because I love garlic. And you know how when you put, uh, when you're sauteing garlic, it can burn really easy, especially if you're not paying 100 percent attention to what you're cooking I don't I tend not to have that problem with the avocado oil yes and grapeseed oil does have a lower smoke point so it's not good for like sauteing or any high heat type of things mm -hmm. it's really great for like salads because it's light tasting and it you know I mean you're not going to cook a salad so okay. also can you repeat the amounts of the ingredients uh, yes so I have one zucchini here I have one bell pepper, but it's split. So I use half of the red and half of the green bell pepper and cut them up. Use one half of the red onion, just a little medium sized red onion. And then one fourth cup of cooked quinoa. So I pre cook, save time. It normally takes about 30 minutes in a rice cooker, but if you're cooking it, you need to cook it on medium um, 
Yeah, just medium on a one-to-one -one ratio. Just like you would do rice. Yes, except rice is full. Okay. And then um, I have one half of a tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt. And we use uh, just some wood. Uh, it's pink because of the, uh, type of the specific algae that grows in the water. And so when they dry that salt, the, it, it's pink, it's pink color. Uh, it can be found at all, well, I, I'll buy some water. And then uh, one half, uh, one teaspoon of dry garlic You sound a little muffled. Is that uh, me? No, and I have garlic, uh, the one tape. Oh, perfect. Can you hear can you me hear better? Me better? Yes. Yes, I can hear you better now. Okay. In that corner. Yes. <laughs> uh, were, you, were you able to hear the amounts? I couldn't yeah. really hear the amounts. It was definitely a little muffled. Okay. I apologize. We have the one zucchini. I have just one ounce of the avocado oil. We have one bell pepper, but I split it half green, half red for the color differential. One half of red onion. One fourth of a cup of cooked quinoa. And we cook that one to one ratio, either on the stove at medium heat or in a rice cooker. I have one teaspoon of garlic powder and one half tablespoon of the pink Himalayan salt. This is just, it, it's about a half of a cup. It's just the internal from this, the zucchini itself. Were you able to hear those amounts? Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. One more question coming in. Um, Thanks so much for the invite. I have lupus and I have a lot of problems with inflammation of my joints. I've been wrestling with good vegan like seasonings. What are good seasonings to use when you're trying to move into a vegan lifestyle? Like what are your go-tos? Just I I mainly just use pink Himalayan and garlic powder because we don't use a lot of salt and we the, we want to taste our vegetables. The effects for me for garlic powder, uh, they enhance the natural flavors and give it a little bit more earthy, round uh, flavor to the grassy tasting vegetables that we have. And I know we use a lot of herbs, a lot of different herbs, whether they are fresh or dried. Oregano. For you specifically for anti-inflammatory, I would definitely play around with turmeric. The less, the better, because it's very pungent, but it's great for anti-inflammatory uh, if you're making your own dressing, or even uh, cumin itself or coriander. Those um, spices really help with loosening the, the anti-inflammatoryness around your uh, joints itself. Excuse me. Uh, for inflammation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Don't be nervous. You, okay, let's go ahead with the... Uh, yes. With the recipe? Yes. So we have these uh, cut already. I have avocado oil in a spray here. So I'm just gonna spray just a little bit on there and uh, rub it on the inside. Take it just, just a little sprinkle of my salt. And then I'm gonna pop it on a tray and put it in the oven. I just have it on the tray right here. Can they see that tree? We're stuck. Okay, continue. Okay. So now that I have uh, that on the tray, because we're, we're doing these both simultaneously, I'm going to go ahead and saute these off. And while they're cooking over here, we'll go into the prep for the, um, the uh, bell peppers as well. So I have these zucchini seeds. We're going to put them in there first. A little bit of our olive oil. I am, I am working on our cameras, guys. We, it seems like we're stuck on one end. Keep going there. Okay. 
And then we're going to add in our bell peppers. I can always do that. And our onions. Quinoa doesn't go in down because it ends up sticking to the bottom. Here we go. I have it on high. There we go. I'm using a wooden spoon. Put this down. I didn't use all of my oil because I want uh, to save some of that oil for when I put my quinoa in here as well. We're going to cook this for about four minutes. We want our onions to be opaque. or see-through, kind of going to clear. So while they're doing that, I'm gonna show you how to press the red bell, the bell peppers for the next recipe. Okay, have our bell peppers. I'm gonna knock them over just like that. I'm going to cut them about one quarter inch from the top, but not all the way through. You're going to go all the way around. Okay. Pop this little top off. You can use all you can use all of the inside here. Just take the little seed part out and you can use that, you know, for something else. So pop out the seed pod. We don't want that. Or any of the seeds. The seeds taste very bitter. So remove them. Same thing with the yellow. Save that for later. I'm going to pop that. Pop that out of here. And this membrane is also bitter, but it really doesn't matter because we're cooking it full time. So take as much as you can out with your hand. I normally just give the the, the body's a little hit to get any residual seeds out. And then again with the avocado oil, just a little spray. I use my hands to moisten the inside that just keeps it from drying out. And a little bit of salt from this recipe. And onto the tray it goes. Can we go back to this camp? As you see, we got a little more here. This is water. Now we're going to turn our heat to medium low. As you can see, we have go in the oven. They're going in for 350 for 15 to 17 minutes. All you and they will be wrinkling it. And through the magic of television, we have some already ready. These are all ready to go. Now we're going to put in the rest of our oil we saved, we reserved. Then we're going to fill this little for about one ounce of water. Our quinoa added to here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of stir. Add in our seasoning. The rest of our The rest of our garlic. Now quinoa salt hog. Like I said, um, it may seem a lot, but it's, it's not. Especially since the pink Himalayan salt is not milder. Nice. Now the quinoa is already cooked, so we're not doing this anymore. We're going to put our water to be glazed. everything hot. We're going to put this in a bowl to the side while we prep our other vegetables. 
I wish y'all could smell it. It smells so good. <laughs> For those that are cooking your end, that you can smell your end if you're cooking, but it smells so good. Yes, there you go. We'll let this chill out over here. Now for our second recipe, we have one ounce of avocado oil, the same half tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt, the half teaspoon of garlic powder, the half teaspoon of chili powder. I use Gerhardt because they're authentic from Mexico. Delicious. Dinner. And then regular ground cumin spoon of that as well. Like I said, anti-inflammatory um, please have um, a small dice, zucchini, onion, one bell pepper in half and half green, all diced as well, and lime wedge. We also have one Quinoa. This recipe is very good. Uh, using the exact same ingredients, uh, save for a few uh, spices. So my my pan back on hot. We put in all of our oil this time. We're gonna start off with the zucchini. It's gonna take the longest to again. See, is about four minutes. It's a little I'm a spatula for this one. Then <laughs> we're going with the onion. By the bed immediately. Now these are smaller, so they're going to take less. So please do not walk away. It's only four minutes. And this time your your item is still cooking in the oven. So if you prep this ahead of time, maybe fifteen minutes of prep, fifteen minutes of cook, you have dinner in thirty minutes or less. Little technique you can try that with cold pan salt, pour some salt in the pan, and the, you're able to keep the grains of salt in the pan. You're ready to try some vegetables. It's all a straight wrist, an elbow that does a fourth motion. One minute in, and we're already in the transparent. Okay. In about 30 more seconds, and then we'll add in our seasoning. Very simple, very easy. So I'm starting off with my garlic. I start off with my garlic this because the powder to toast in a dry pan like this and we want that toasted garlic flavor because it's gonna be offset by lime. We want the taste like Mexico, which is a pepper, spice, barbacoa, the kind of flavor intensity we're getting. Southwestern flavor. Now we add in our chili powder, the same effect. They're already pre-smoked, but you'll smell it immediately. Then we add in our and our salt. And I'm doing again uh, just one more ounce of water. What type of pan is that? Is that a ceramic um, or is it? 
What type of pan? Ceramic pan. Where did we get this? Uh, big lots, I think. Yes. Yes. They use a nonstick pan for regular skillet. I just like it because it's for for seeing purposes. You can see the pop off one. And it acts as a nonstick stick as well. Durable, especially since I cook heavy. So we're going to add in our water. The water in this case keeps the juice from burning. We don't want lime taste in here. The water is going to help that flavor. And uh, vegetables it in with the steam so that a lot of flavor goes into the vegetables instead of burning on the pan. Our last uh, seconds, we're just going to let it cook from the heat left over from the eye. So can I have this camera? Sure. Now we have our quinoa here. We're gonna we're not adding on here. I want to add this to the A little mix through. And that looks similar, but not the same. You can add flour and make these burgers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, not we try gluten free as well because I don't, I'm not sure if you know, but gluten actually uh, causes inflammation. So we try to use um, a gluten -free. flour, like yeah. nut flour. Yeah. Chickpea flour, the kamut flour. Yeah, give your ancient grains. We just came to Daniel's fast too, so we're all cleaned up. And it's so easy. We'll take our mix from earlier that day. Or Oh, someone wants to know what can you substitute for quinoa? Uh, rice, eating rice, or you brown. can leave it together. Yes, brown rice. Brown white rice. The wild rice might be a little bit. Too yes, a texture. The now, uh, a lot of people have trouble digesting uh, white rice. Mike loves wild rice. Mm. Yep. My go to. Mm. Now, this one. I remember I had a taste for um, wild rice, and I, this was before, you know, I was hip to reading ingredients. I looked at the Uncle Ben's package, and the sodium alone was like, I think, 1,200 grams. I was just like, oh, no. Was that the wild rice? Yeah. The thing about that, that's like a mixed grain. It's not even really considered to be wild rice. It's like a mixed grain. Uh, okay, so here's our dish. If you are a vegetarian, cheese and back in the oven for two minutes and you'll have this like a cheesy encapsulment. It's much easier for you know, to kids to eat it if you add cheese. And we use vegan, vegan cheese in our household. So our, our son is like, what is that? <laughs> eat it. Do y'all have a meal service, meal prep service? We do actually. Um, we meal prep every week for a number of clients and we will put that up on the screen if it's not already the um, presentation received uh but we'll put that up on the screen here in just a little bit now we do personalized mm -hmm. so uh every everybody's menu is built just for you. do an analysis to make the food and the ingredients that we use is the right for you and that's going to help you
feel better. And I can't make one for, let's say, Miss Jackson and then one for Garrett. And, and it'd be the same because, you know, Mr. Jackson could be 70 years old and Mr. Garrett be 40. You know, it's, that is need different things. So, and that's the, the customization is your menu is built for you, anybody else. Yes, and all, all our expertise. that you want. I had uh, uh, clients who say, oh, I just eat soul food all the time. I'm trying to do that, you know, that rabbit food thing. Can you, can I have chicken? And so we make chicken waffles that are vegan. And there we are. Stuff, bell peppers. Looks amazing. <laughs> I like it my mama. And our zucchini boats. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> we are back. So yes. great. We're always excited to taste. We're sorry, we get we're food in front of us. <laughs> so I guess I'm grabbing the forks, right? No, they're oh, yeah. they already on the plate. Okay. Yes. I was prepared. I know y'all were hungry. Are there any other questions or comments or concerns before we get this portion? I guess like that means it. no. Did anybody cook while they were cooking? If you would. Don't be embarrassed. You can share, show your plate. Yes, she uh, yes. How did you, are you still cooking, Catrice? Yes, it's on. Um, I have one minute and 26 seconds for my zucchini that's in the oven. And I don't cook, by the way, okay? So this is brand new. I'm excited <laughs> for myself. And my, husband, my husband is over there laughing at me. Yes, I'm yeah. still well, cooking as well. I can't guarantee how this is going to come out, but I'm still cooking. I've been sampling mine. I, mine is going to be great. I'm just waiting for my cookies to finish cooking and my bell pepper in the oven. That's wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and finish up a little bit more of our presentation. This is great. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to like it, Mike. <laughs> yes. Mike so, like everything. Mike is going to uh, talk to us a little bit more because we understand that you all have the 5K coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see if I can get us on the right. There we go. There so we this 5K is coming up, right? Yes. Thursday, February 11th and Saturday, February 13th. Hmm. It is a virtual run. Okay. Yeah. So quarantining can stay quarantined. <laughs> so does that mean that they're that virtually you're going to be running inside your house or garage or how how will that work? That was the question. <laughs> so then we're going to be walking together. You can walk in your house if you want to, or you can walk outside. Okay. Okay. Well, one of the things that I want to talk about, which is important, is the preparation, preparing yourself for the walk. And a lot of people, when it comes to stretching and things of that nature, they really have a problem with that because, you know, with stretching, it requires discipline because there is pain associated with it. So we put together, or I put together some stretches that you guys can do that will help you to make sure that you finish, not only finish the 5K, but afterwards you'll feel better and won't, you know, have a whole lot of side effects. So if you can, for those that have the presentation, just try these stretches out and I'm pretty sure that they'll work for you and you'll feel great. Okay. 
And do we have any questions? Okay. This is a little of what we do. Mm -hmm. I am a professional chef and have been for 16 years. Um, I've cooked my entire life. I was not only trained by my grandmother, who was a chef for, what, 45, 50 yes. years professionally uh, since I was a toddler. But then I was classically trained and, and now I, I'm well versed in most worldly cuisines and have been uh, certified as a nutritional coach. And of course, I am a yoga and meditation instructor and I offer all types of yoga and meditation classes. My focus is on beginners and people who have um, maybe some type of challenge where they can't keep up a, um, uh, a major exercise program or they have, um, they don't want to get their heart rate up, you know, too high. So I just like to make sure that I am able to get you started and get you on your way without uh, the intimidation because a lot of people are intimidated to go into the gym. A lot of people are intimidated by yoga period because they think that we have to go into all these crazy poses and things like that. Well, that's definitely not true. We can start off really slow. And that's one of my specialties. Again, you guys have heard that I live with heart disease. And one of my challenges is um, being able to get my heart rate up to a certain level because I also have a defibrillator. And if my heart rate goes up too high, then, you know, it can cause some, some issues in our sessions. So I like to keep it nice and, and easy, especially for my clients. And myself, I am a fitness uh, certified personal trainer. Um, this is something that my wife tried me to, I mean, tried to get me to do about maybe five or six years ago. So I'm a personal trainer and I love to work out and I love to help people to reach their goals. Um, I don't deal with weights. I deal with your body weight only. Uh, I specialize in, in balance and flexibility, um, hit cardio and plyometrics. So with that, we really appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to present this information to you guys. Um, obesity is something that's running rapid in our communities and our families. And one of the things that we really need to do is take better care of ourselves um, and make a choice. Do we want to eat to live or eat to die? So choose life. And that's where Choose Life was born. Absolutely. Right. So, so again, it, are there any questions? Yes. Okay. Hello. This, this was amazing. This was so amazing. Um, I love your testimony. I love the presentation and learned so much um, just on the fact of obesity. I am a person who loves potatoes. Um, I love peppers, but I didn't know how to make stuffed peppers. I think, uh, like Catrice, I don't do very much cooking. <laughs> so, um, this was something easy. This was something healthy. And so I've enjoyed it. And thank you. Well, we're excited. We're glad that you all, um, are enjoying it. Catrice, I can see you have yours in front of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't know if y'all saw that plate, but it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's finished. Done. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I'm Gladys, glad are you cooking, it. Gladys? How did it turn out, Gladys? It, I, I, you know, I didn't turn my oven up very high, so I think my zucchini is almost done, but my okay. my um, quinoa and what I'm going to stuff it with, it's, it tastes lovely. Yes. Oh, wonderful. So I'm excited. So yes. And that's what we specialize in. Uh, you know, making, uh, I create recipes that you can make at your home, whether you're a, a novice or a professional, it's something that's quick because, you know, I have kids, so I know how it is, especially in our busy, busy world. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, hi, Crystal and Mike, this is Sean. 
Or, or, hey, are the vegetables soft enough for people that got braces? I got braces, so I can't chew on hard vegetables. So you can uh, cook them to your liking, right? Yes. Oh, okay. And another two minutes after you add the water to mm -hmm. go ahead and soft, uh, soften them even further. And okay. a number of our, my clients, like or our clients, like 70% mm -hmm. of our clients have that same issue. Some of okay. them, you know, had their teeth removed. Some of them have digestive issues where they can't have too much fiber. So mm -hmm. we have to cook, cook, cook for them. Cook mm -hmm. things okay. down. But our cooking style, my cooking style is very adaptable and it's adaptable to the person. Okay. Thank and you. My grandbaby also even um, <laughs> has this recipe and she loves it. She's only one year old, so, mm -hmm. uh, or one year old. So her teeth are, you know, just now coming in. And she knows when we pull out the zucchini and the squash, she is eat, eat. she is ready because she, so yeah, we, we soften it up a little bit for her. She does the quinoa. We cook the quinoa just a little bit longer for her. But yeah, so for all ages, if they can, you know, uh, digest whole foods, why not? Yeah. And one note, our grandbaby has grown people teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all for us. We have uh, one video to take us out, and then you can take back over, Ms. Rita. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great presentation. Great. That was absolutely amazing. It was. It was great. <laughs> Thank you so much. We wanted to, so uh, my name is Retta Washington McCoy. I'm the first vice president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Dallas Metropolitan Chapter. And on behalf of our president, Ms. Sonia Irby, our chair, Ms. Jatan Hawkins, our co-chair, Ms. Paula Sims, our moderators for tonight, Ms. Shalandia Peters and Ms. Sarah Jones, we, and all of our committee members, we want to sincerely thank Choose Life for the amazing presentation. And we do hope that you will come back with us and, and give us some more great recipes. I am hungry. Let me tell you right now, as soon as we end, I'm eating. So... But at this time, we, again, we want to thank Choose Life. Uh, we will share the presentation with everyone who was participating tonight. And that way you can have those tips, especially those stretching tips, because you will hear in a few minutes from our president. And she is going to uh, reiterate and share some more information with you about some of our upcoming programs. So again, thank you very much, Ms. Crystal Garrett, Mr. Mike Garrett, and Chef Nay Cox for an amazing presentation, Madam President. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. I want to thank the Choose Life team for an amazing, amazing presentation. Now, I did cook. I cannot tell you how it tastes because I didn't want to eat on camera. So we'll see how that turns out. But thank you so much for joining us tonight to all of our audience. Uh, we want to just remind you that we do have our 5K coming up. So please visit all of our social media sites to get more information about our virtual 5K and join us for the walk. Uh, you can walk anytime between February 11 through 13. And if you want to join us as a group, we're going to walk together on February 13. So we hope that you will at some point during that time join in on the fun with us. We also have a program coming up on January 28th, Hidden in Plain Sight, our sex trafficking awareness program. Again, you can find information on our website, on all, all of our social media channels, as well as Eventbrite. Again, thank you so much to Choose Life and to all of our participants. We wish you a happy and healthy new year. Thank you.